Okay, in this video, I'm going to cover problems seven and eight from the 2020 Summer Engineering 1301 final. Okay, so on problem number seven, let's get started with that one. We're looking for the volume of a pyramid, and we want to report the answer here in gallons. Okay, volume of the pyramid, answer in gallons. So I'm looking through this, and the idea here is you're supposed to stick to the conversion charts. And so I'm looking at how to navigate through the conversion chart. And so what I know is I'm going to have something in either cubic feet or cubic meters when I look at the volume, because I'm starting with feet, I'm starting with meters, I'd have to convert to one or the other. I have to decide which, okay? And so along the way, you might want to look ahead a little bit and think, well, if I'm going to get to, to a system, how do I get from cubic feet or cubic meters to a volume that's in that particular system of measurement? So uh, in this case, um, what we have is gallons, okay? And so how am I gonna convert cubic feet to gallons, all right? And so I'm looking through the list here and I'm not noticing cubic feet to gallons as something as one of the things on the list. All right, so uh, what do I do? Well, I'm, I do notice the thing that I've circled here. I do notice this conversion. There's a conversion between fluid ounces and milliliters. And once I have fluid ounces, that's in the English system, and I can do this conversion, ounces to a cup, cups to a quart, quarts to a gallon, and I can get there from that, from that route. Okay, so that's what I do here. I just think it through, and because of the way I've thought that through, I realize I'm gonna to need to convert everything to the metric system first. Okay, once I get that into liters or milliliters, it'll be just a unit conversion to get it back to volume. Okay, so that's what I did here. I took um, the length measurements, all right? Anything that wasn't in metric, I converted it to metric using you know, our conversion factors that we know about, 10 feet, 12 inches in a foot, 2.54 centimeters in an inch, one meter in 100 centimeters. Okay, so that does that conversion and you get this converted over into meters. All right, do the same thing for height and width is already given in meters. All right, so when I calculate volume, Volume would then be in meters, okay? And so the rest of the solution is just the conversion uh, from me cubic meters to gallons, all right? So what I'm looking at here is I start with 1.858 cubic meters. In one cubic meter, there's 100 cubic centimeters. So I have to cube the 100 as well, right? The meters is cubed, so the, the 100 centimeter needs to be cubed as well. Okay, so now I've got that in cubic meters, and what I see in the chart is one cubic centimeter, that's a cc, one cubic centimeter is one milliliter, and from there, 29.6 milliliters in one fluid ounce, eight fluid ounces in a cup, four cups in a quart, four quarts in a gallon. Okay, and so that, when you multiply that string out, you get the conversion two gallons. So a lot going on with the unit conversions there. Uh, I'd likely give you one that's a little less complicated than that, but you should know how to do all these steps. Okay, next up, problem number eight. Okay, and on the old final, I sort of made, uh, you know, in that time, I, I insisted more on using Kramer's rule to solve for x. And since that time, I backed off that because I realized not everybody's seen Kramer's rule before. And so you can use any method, all right? So what I'm gonna walk through here is a uh, elimination method, okay? So we'll start with an equation. Remember, we've talked about how it's, there's the writing of the equations and there's the solving of the equations. And those are kind of two different processes. So in this one, if I'm trying to solve for x, I can try to eliminate y, 
All right, so what I'm thinking here is I'm gonna multiply both these equations by the appropriate number. So in the first case, let's use a five. And where did I get five? Well, I, I looked here. Okay, in the second case, I'm gonna multiply by two. Where did I get two? I got it from here, okay? And so I, I do, if I do it on one side, I have to do it on the other. That's what we do with algebra. Okay, and I, I sort of rigged it to so, so that when we multiply this out, when I multiply it out, I get 15x minus 10y is equal to 16 times 5 is 80. Okay, and then 4x plus 10y is equal to minus 4. All right, then what I do is I add these together, and what you see is the 10s subtract, and I get 19x is equal to 76, I can solve for x. 76 divided by 19 is four, okay? So what I'm saying when I give this problem is I expect you to be able to solve a system of equations where there's two unknowns. Another thing you can do is use one equation, solve it for, for um, y, and then back substitute that in and then you can eventually get to x. So there's several methods that you can use there. Okay, so here's uh, solutions for problems seven and eight from the old final.